Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radio detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. And I want to thank Thomas and Vivian so much for their support. They gave a one-time donation at support.greatdetectives.net. Also, we have a new Patreon sponsor at the master detective level of $15 or more. Thank you to Emmett so much for your support, and you can support the show on a monthly, ongoing basis at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Not Beat, the original air date, May the 15th, 1950, and this one is Not Watchmen. Wheaties presents Night Beat. <laughs> On stage tonight from Hollywood, Nightbeat, another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Night Beat. Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the Night Beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start in many different ways. This one began in the darkness of the human mind and ended in raging flame. Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. There's been a lot of talk about Wheaties and champions. But you know, really, anybody can eat Wheaties. Of course, a lot of champions do. But so do a lot of other people, millions of them. Tomorrow morning, they'll shake the Wheaties into the bowl, pour on the milk, put on the fruit, and enjoy themselves. These millions of happy people have made Wheaties Americans' favorite whole wheat flakes. So even though they're called Breakfast of Champions, we want you to feel perfectly free to get Wheaties at the grocery tomorrow. Two packages, if you wish. They go pretty fast. Crisp, you know. A kind of nut-like taste to them. Wheaties. Have some. <laughs> Ever look at people as you pass them on the street and wonder what their lives are like? Where they've been, where they're going, and what they'll do when they get there? Me, I'm a sucker for the guy who wears his heart on his sleeve with just the scars showing. Or a pair of eyes that look out of a soul eaten away by loneliness. The old lady eating her dinner alone in a booth for four. The lone drinker in a plushy bar who toasts his reflections in the mirror and wishes that he was too drunk to see it. Sometimes the busiest street in the city can be the lonesomest spot in the world. And tonight it had seemed like that as I drove through the dark city. I was well into the warehouse district when I saw a flash. It was like an explosion, only there was no noise, no sound, just this flash and then flames. It was a three-story warehouse, the old wooden type, and the flames worked fast. I started past to find a box to turn in the alarm when I saw a man, and he was running into the fire. I stopped the car and took off after him. The only light in the building was from the fire, and the man was nowhere in sight. Hey, you! Here I was making like a regular stout-hearted Frank Merriwell, first one to a fire and no one to save. And then I heard him. Tony! Tony! I followed the sound of his voice. He was standing at the foot of some wooden steps, yelling his head off. Tony! Hey, Tony! Hey, you! Hey, what are you doing? Come on, Pop. Huh? Let's watch it from outside. Let go of me. Now, come on, now, come on. Leave me alone. Let go of me. Hey, come back here, you fool. Go away. Leave me. Papa, you hurt? My leg. I hit it when I fell. Well, let's see if you can walk. I can walk if you'll help me. I'll go with you, mister. Yes, I figured you would. I half carried, half dragged the old man. The smoke was so strong that my lungs ached. I felt lightheaded. Outside, a crowd had gathered. A line of policemen were keeping them back out of the fireman's way. 
One cop came over to us. Hey, you guys, you work here? He came in after me. Who are you? I'm Strongheart the second, only don't let it get around. Oh, are you, Randy? How are you? The old man's leg hurt? is isn't broken, it's just banged up a bit. You guys stay put. I'll get the ambulance boys over here. Okay, we'll be here. I, I'm not saying. Now you stay where you are. I gotta get going. What's the rush, Bob? Any good reason why you shouldn't wait around? You mean, did I have anything to do with the fire? Well, did you? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't have anything to do with it. Okay, okay, nobody's accusing you. What's it all about? Why did you run in there after the fire started? That's my business. Well, you're going to have to answer questions. You might as well start with me. Well, get me out of here, mister. Get me home, and maybe I will. I led him through the crowd and to my car. I followed his directions through the dark streets. He seemed to be looking for something. He leaned forward, watching in the lights of the car, turned his head to peer at everyone we passed. And all the time, he was silent. Finally, I broke the ice. Uh, maybe I'd better know who you are, hmm? Hey, I'm Ben Graham. Hmm. You said you were going to talk. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my son, Tony. Were you looking for him in the fire? Tony went there earlier. When, when I saw the fire start, I thought he might still be in there. And you ran in to find him? Uh, Tony used to work there. He used to? Yeah, he was a night watchman there and several other warehouses. You see, he's not like other people. I, I was afraid they'd see him there. Oh, uh, like... Oh, it's not what you think. He's not crazy. He's... Well, he stays inside himself, if you know what I mean. He... He don't like people. He sleeps in the daytime. He lives at night. What happens with the jobs? Does he quit? He was fired. Every time. Fired. Why? He thinks it's because of the cane. Well, he uses a cane? Yeah, but since he was a boy, he's touchy about it. One reason he doesn't like people. Ben, why do you think he started the fire? Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say anything like that. No, you didn't have to. It shows. I don't know what to think. There have been several warehouse fires around here recently. Five? Less than a month? Yeah, yeah. Are they the ones where Tony worked? Some of them, but it's not only that. But well, what else, Ben? Why are you afraid Tony started those fires? Three out of five of them are. Man with a cane was seen coming out around the time of the fire, and it, I, I, I gotta find him. Have you asked him about the fires? Oh, I've tried it. We don't talk much. Oh, uh, that's my place. Oh. It seems like we're strangers. When, when I mention fires, he slams out of the house. Well, I'll talk to him then when we find him. I mean, I talk to you, Mister. He's, he's funny about that. Well, we'll see. Hmm? I'll go in with you. No, no, no. You, you wait here. Don't come up there. I'll, I'll bring him out to you. <laughs> Ben Graham staggered up the short walk to his little shed. What was he hiding? What was he afraid for me to see? I heard him open the door without a key. The light switched on. After a few seconds, switched off, but Graham didn't come out. I waited a few minutes and then made my way to the darkened house. There was no sound from the inside. I called as I felt for the door. Ben! There was no answer. I found the knob. Before I could turn it, the door was yanked open. You, I told you to wait. I told you to wait in the car. Well, I saw the light go out. When you didn't come back, I thought something was wrong. Come on, there's, there's nothing wrong. Get back into the car. Tony's not here. We got to find him, Ben. I know, before the police do. But where? Well, we'll try some of the warehouses. That's, that's where he hangs out. Which ones? Are they near here? Yeah, yeah, around. Well, then why don't we leave the car here and walk? No. Get in. What are you hiding, Ben? What do you want to get me away from? You wanted to find out or not? All right, all right. Where to? Block down and block over. Young and Wilson's warehouse. You seem to know a lot about these warehouses yourself. I've been working in them most of my life. That is, I, I used it. Uh -huh. This uh, Young and Wilson, is that where the next fire is supposed to take place? I hope not, mister. I hope not. <laughs> Slow down. That's it ahead. The building's dark. Now the watchman's inside. Over here. You do know your way around. Here? Yeah. What do you want? Tony here? Who wants him? Oh, you. Get away from that door. Don't come around here, Graham. Have you seen Tony? No, he's not here. Now get moving. What is all this? You're a stranger around here, you'd know. I'd know what? About Ben. He's a bad luck woman. Anywhere he goes, trouble starts. 
Somebody gets hurt or a fire breaks out. Once a watchman was killed. There's always accidents. It's him. What kind of superstition is that? Maybe it's superstition to you, but not to us. All the watchmen know. Ask any of them. Now move on. Well, what's that all about? It's true what he says. Oh, coincidence. Well, call it any M you like. It happens. It, it can't help it. It just happens. That's why you're not working now? Oh, nobody will hire me. They, they all know. Sometimes they think up excuses, but mostly they're like him. They, they run me off. You could get some other kind of work. Oh, I've tried, but they ask me where I worked, and when they check, they find out they don't need me. I... Listen. Stand back. It's Ken. Tony? We'll soon see when he turns that corner. What are you doing with a gun? Keep out of the room. You're not going to... Shh, don't talk. That's not a cane. That's a nightstick. Policeman. Hey, you! Over there! He won't find me here. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, hey, wait a minute! What's the matter with old Screwball? With who? Ben Graham. Oh, you know him? Sure. Everyone around here knows him. I'd rather have a black cat cross my path than Ben. Why? Wherever there's trouble, you'll find him. See the fire tonight? Oh, yes. Why? I'll bet he was there. Every time there's a fire, someone swears Ben was there. Hey. Mm hmm. Yeah. What was it the watchman had said? Somebody gets hurt or a fire breaks out? What about the fires where a man with a cane was always seen and another man who nobody wanted around? Why did Ben run when he saw the police? Why was he carrying a gun? I decided I wanted to see the Graham shack again. What was he hiding in that house? What was it he didn't want me to see? The little building was dark when I went up the walk. If either Tony or his father was there, he didn't want anyone to know about it. I knocked once before I turned the knob. I thought I heard a movement in the corner. Ben? Tony? Anybody here? I felt along the wall for a switch. There was a sound like the cry of a cat. Oh. What do you want? Please answer. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I frightened you. I, I'm looking for Mr. Graham. My husband or my son? Uh, both of them. What is it? What's happened? Oh, nothing's happened. I just wanted to see them. There is something. I know there is. No, it's nothing, really. Now, why don't you lock the door when I leave so no more bad dreams can come in, huh? I can't lock the door. I can't move out of this bed. Oh, you're paralyzed. I didn't know. I, I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't have laughed. It's all right. I like to hear it. No one laughs here. Won't you sit down? No, I, I can't stay. I've got to find Ben or Tony. What have they done, mister? Oh, they haven't done anything. You're just like them. They won't tell me anything either. I lie here alone in the dark. Can't move. No one will tell me anything. Well, I just wanted to give them a message. No, you didn't. Don't try to fool me. Nobody wants them. Either of them. I'm sorry I disturbed you, Mrs. Graham. Is there anything that I can do for you? You can talk to me. Just talk to me. They don't talk, Ben and Tony. They're dark men, both of them. Why do you say no one wants them? Has there been uh, trouble? There's always been trouble. What are they into now? I don't know. I better go find them. Is it the fires? You know? I guess. It is. It is the fire. Now, don't upset yourself. Ben and Tony are all right. They won't tell me. They won't talk about the fire. I ask them and they won't answer. I know. I tell you, they're all right. I just talked to your husband, to Ben. I, I thought he came here. They don't come here. All these years I've laid here alone. They don't come here but to sleep and to eat. Well, Ben was here a little while ago. He turned off the light and waited in the dark. What did he want? What was he waiting for? We, uh, we were looking for Tony. What has he done? I've got a right to know. I'm his mother. Well, Ben thinks that Tony started the fires. Tony? <laughs> Tony started the fires. <laughs> he did. He did. Tony started the fire.
General Mills is bringing you Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. This is for people over 21. All you kids go get ready for bed or something, will you? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, why should the children have a corner on the Wheaties? Now, if they don't at your house, good. Because honest now, who works any harder than you? You need whole wheat too. Whole wheat with the sun in it, sure good. Whole wheat nourishment. And Wheaties are about the nicest, flakiest, most delectable way of getting whole wheat nourishment that you ever saw. Now, you notice I don't call Wheaties breakfast food. Just breakfast food? Oh, never. Lunch food, Sunday night supper food, snack food for the off times like just before bed. Sure, you can have Wheaties any old time and get the sunny whole wheat just the same. Sugar them, cream them, strawberry them if you want to. Eat them any way you like them. But don't feel that just because you've gotten old enough to vote, you have to give up Wheaties. They're still America's favorite whole wheat flakes, just like they were when you were wearing pigtails and short pants. Okay, the kids can listen again now. That's um, Wheaties you're going to get tomorrow. Remember? And now back to Nightbeat and Randy Stone. Yes, it was adding up, but it wasn't making sense. First, I drag a man out of a fire, a man who's carrying a gun. And now a frightened, paralyzed woman who wanted someone to listen. I could feel that tingling on the back of my neck as Martha Grain talked. She was terrified at the mention of fire. I sat in one of the chairs beside her bed and tried to calm her fear. She wanted to talk, and I couldn't stop her. Tony started the fire. It burned our house. That, that's how I got like this. That's why Tony uses a cane. He was a little boy then. Tony loved matches. He liked to watch them burn. Well, don't think about it now. I think about it all the time. Sometimes I dream about it. Everything burning all around me, my clothes on fire, and, and Tony in, in the corner screaming. I can see it over and over. Isn't it better if you don't talk about it, Mrs. Graham? Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. That's all I hear. I want to talk. It's better than lying here alone, not able to move. Now, don't excite yourself. Why don't you get some sleep? All right. If you'll stay, I'll talk about something else. Do you have any idea where Tony is? In one of the warehouses. It's where he always is. Well, I'd like to see him. Do you know which one? What time is it? Well, let me see. It's, uh, it's a little after two. Why? Then he's at the Holland Warehouse, about three blocks from here. It's where he goes at two. I don't understand. You mean he goes to different warehouses at certain times? Yeah. Tony makes a few dollars. The watchmen help him out. But he never talks to me. Well, it's hard for all of us to talk sometimes. You say Tony will be at the Holland Warehouse at two? Yeah. Tony tells me where he'll be. I don't worry if I know. And Ben, will he be there too? If he's looking for Tony, he will. Oh, thank you, thank you. I must be going. Will you do something for me, mister, before you go? Well, sure. What is it? Laugh for me. I just want to hear you laugh. <laughs> Laugh, she says. She hits me between the eyes and tells me to laugh. I stayed with Martha Graham a little longer, promised her I'd come back, and I set out to find the Holland Warehouse. It was larger than the other buildings around it and stronger. It was made of cement and steel and it towered above its wooden neighbors by several stories. I tried the front door, no luck. I rang the bell, I waited. No one came. I tried beating on the door. That didn't do any good either. I started to turn away and then... Who are you? I'm the watchman here. I thought the watchman stayed inside. I just stepped around the corner for two o'clock coffee. Oh? Uh, don't worry. The place is guarded. There's a fellow inside. Oh, Tony Graham? Yeah. You know him? Well, in a way. Is his father with him? Uh, that jinx. I wouldn't let him near the place. Oh, you too. Huh? Well, let's go in. I want to talk to Tony. About what? I'll tell him. Come on. Where's your light? Got a flash here. Tony. Tony? Tony! That's funny. Well, it's a big building. He's probably on one of the other floors. It shouldn't be. We punch a time clock here. This is the time we're supposed to check in on this floor. Now, where is the clock? Over by the stairs. Lights are there, too. 
I'd like Tony not to be here. You mean you've left him here before? Sure, he... He helps a lot of the guards, kind of relieves them like. We all pay him a little. And that way he can have a job and his old man don't know it. Better with these lights. Well, there's your light and there's your clock, but no Tony. Can't understand it. Let's try upstairs. We'll take this freight elevator. Are you in all the aisles here at least once during the night? Uh, it'd be pretty hard to do with all those rows of boxes and crates. Hey, uh, you, uh, you don't think uh, something's happened to them, do you? I hope not. I don't think he's up here. I don't know where he is. Listen. Tony and Ben, behind those boxes, they're coming I, I tell you, I didn't have anything to do with these fires. Oh, you'd say that. I knew you'd say that. But I didn't. Why would I start these fires? Because you're a firebug, that's why. I'm not. You've told me that all my life, but I'm not. Ben. Who's that? What are you doing with that gun? Stone, are you following me? What are you doing up here, Tony? I came up here to punch the clock. He, he followed me up. Huh? He's going to kill me. That's the only way. Uh, there's always trouble where he is. I told you. Shut up. It's not my fault, everything that happens. It's not my fault about my family either. Look at us. Me. Nobody give me a job and Martha. I know, Ben. I saw her. I know all about us, don't you? Oh, but Tony, there he is. A firebug. What's that? Hey, hey, fire! The building's on fire! You brought it, Ben Graham. I told you not to come here. I'm getting out! Another fire, Tony. I didn't start it. I've been up here with you. I know you started it just like the others. I didn't start them. Oh, listen to me, Pa. I didn't do it. You have no proof he started them. How many times did I stop you when you were a kid? You always like to play with the fire and watch things burn. All kids do. That doesn't prove I... In our house, you sat there at fire, too. Everything we had went up. We've never had anything since. Haven't I been punished for that fire? Look at me, haven't I? Yeah, but not for the others. You'll never do it again, never. Put that gun down, Ben. You can't do that. That's murder. He's got to be stopped. It's got to be. But not that way. What if he didn't do it? What if you're wrong? I can't be wrong. I know him. You don't know him at all. You don't even know what he's been doing at night. Oh, yes, I do. He goes from one warehouse to another. I've been following him. <laughs> he's been in every one of those buildings just before they burned. Every one of them? You see, even you were beginning to believe. The fire bell has stopped. That means the watchman's turned in the alarm. It's automatic. The fire truck should be here soon. The sooner the better. Look at the smoke has started to seep in. Let's get out of here. Yeah. yeah. You're not getting out of here, Tony. I can't let you. Listen, you can't do it, Ben. It's like a lynching. You can't be the judge and executioner, too. I can't take any more. A monster, the way she is, and Tony like this. You know what they'll do to him. An asylum. I couldn't stand that. It's better this way. <laughs> Smoke, will you put that gun away, Ben? Tony, I don't want to do it, but it's the only way. There's one other way. Stay away from me, I don't want to hurt you. Stay away. I'm not much of a target with the smoke. Stay away. Give me the gun. Give me the gun. Give it to me. Grab the gun, Tony. I got it. All right, now, come on. We're getting out of here. Let it in now. Come on. Let go, my arm. I said come on. Tony, show us the way out. If I can, Mr. Stone. If I can. <laughs> The room was full of smoke and the concrete floor was warm from the fire below. We worked our way to the elevator, but from the smoke and sparks growing up the shaft like a giant smokestack, we knew it was useless. The stairway! Over here! Ben had stopped struggling. He wanted to live, too. We followed Tony by the sound of his cane. He stopped before he reached the steps. Flames outlined the square of the stairwell. Tony! Take us to the fire escape! Where is it? The other side! Down this way! Ben was coughing and gasping for breath. Once he stumbled, nearly fell. For a second time in one night, I was helping him out of a fire. Through the smoke, we saw the light of the red exit sign. We leaned against the door and we found it open. A policeman was on the landing. I was coming after you. Watchman said you were here. He helped us down to the street and away from the building. You just took another one out. Over here, the fire bug. The fire bug? Oh, no. Ma. Ma, you're walking. Oh, no. Martha, it can't be. Who is she? The old man's wife. But she can't walk. She's paralyzed. What's it all about, Martha? My men and those warehouses. They acted like I was already dead. She was hurt in the fire a long time ago. Oh. You can walk better than me. Nobody will care. Oh, sure we do, Ma. Sure. Did you start those fires? Yes, I started them. That's what they did to me. And after I was hurt, they left me alone. They let me lie there alone. First I got so I could talk. 
But you wouldn't talk to me. I couldn't mind seeing you there like that, knowing it was my fault. Nobody came in. All those years, nobody. You can walk. Then I got so I could walk. When was that, Martha? About a year ago. First, I thought I'd go out and see people. But I don't know anybody now. Why didn't you tell us? I was going to surprise you, Ben. But you didn't want me. You wouldn't stay around. Don't you see it was because it hurt us to see you like that? When you look at me, you'd look away. So at night, I'd follow you. You didn't even look around. Then I got to understand. You didn't want me. It was the warehouses you wanted. I was jealous of those warehouses. Just like they were people, and I hated them. Martha, no. Oh, no. So one night, I watched you both go into one of the buildings. And I was left outside alone. Just like I'd been so many years. I wanted to kill it. To destroy it. Oh, Mom. And when you came out, I went inside. There were some papers and things in the corner. I started the fire, and then I ran out. Tony, I, I thought then that Then you... I hid, and I watched. And fire trucks came, and people. <laughs> I had to laugh. I brought all those people. They came because of me. Yeah, yeah. You come with us, Mrs. Graham. You? Where? They'll take you to a hospital. There'll be people there. People? People? Will they talk to me? Will they talk to me? Why, sure, sure they'll talk to you, Martha. They'll talk to you. Some story, huh? Brother, sometimes the night is even deeper than we think. A moral, too? Well, it seems to me it sticks out all over the place. The Graham's loneliness proved about as deadly as poison, even more deadly. At least poison kills quickly. But there's an answer to loneliness, and it's so simple it chokes you. Loneliness is a prison that separates you from the world. And you can escape from that prison in only one way. By freeing another. Hmm. Oh, yes, indeed. None but the lonely heart stone. Copy, boy. You are listening to Night Beat on the Wheaties' Big Parade. Here's a hooray for the Reader's Digest. This hooray is... Sent up by the Wheaties people because the Reader's Digest has printed a very smart word or two on breakfast in their May issue. Most people don't eat enough breakfast, reports the Digest. Most people would feel better, look better, work better if they did. The Wheaties people suggest you try the breakfast of champions as the better part of a better breakfast and see just how true the Reader's Digest article is. <laughs> Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis and edited by Larry Marcus. Tonight's story was written by Joel Hunt with music by Frank Worth. Others in tonight's cast were Sarah Selby, Paul McVeigh, Sam Edwards, Junius Matthews, and Frank Gerstle. Listen next week at this same time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. And this is your Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen also on Wednesday night to Brian Donlevy in Dangerous Assignment on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. <laughs> Going to bake a pie sometime soon? Make it with Crust Quick, the Betty Crocker pie crust mix. You know, it's a tender, flaky crust that's at the bottom of every delicious pie. Sure as you use Crust Quick. And so easy. Just add water to Crust Quick. Mmm, and what pie crust? Tender crust. 
tasty crust. Rich, short, lovely crust, just like Betty Crocker makes. And you can make it. Just add water to crust quick. Crust quick, the Betty Crocker pie crust mix. Nightbeat came to you from Hollywood. Portions transcribed. Stay tuned for the Treasury Bond Drive Show on NBC. Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, a uh, very big surprise twist ending. Throughout this, I was really expecting the father to turn out to be the arsonist. But uh, finding out it was the mother was very surprising. I will have to say that from a practical level, I did find it a little hard to swallow that she could recover the ability to walk without some sort of... uh, rehab uh, process. Well, I suppose she could have done some sort of exercises on her own. But I think that the uh, point of how she felt and how their guilt had driven them apart as a family is very uh, poignant. All right, well, now on to listener comments and feedback. And uh, Thomas, uh, in sending in his uh, donation rights, Great shows. I listen to you on Stitcher every day. Well, we have a lot of listeners on Stitcher. Uh, Thanks so much for your comment. I also do appreciate your support. All right. uh, Join us back here tomorrow for Inspector Thorne. And then next Monday, it's another episode of Not Beat. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and uh, 